Even in an age where we had eight long years of a president as racially divisive as the charlatan community organizing President Barack Hussein Obama, otherwise, no as Barry Soetero. It's starting to seem like American citizens have finally had enough of the far left-wing radical indoctrination in American taxpayer-subsidized colleges and universities. And it's about damn time. After the University of Missouri at Columbia became infamous for allowing a series of protests by African-American students while having the unwavering support of most of its faculty, it looks like new Mizzou enrollment numbers have decreased substantially from the previous year. Most parents don't want to send their children to a hotbed of make-believe racial divide. Things at the University of Missouri became very heated after four questionable racial incidents allegedly happened on campus. The Daily Wire reports, the first N-word incident. On September 12, student government president Peyton had alleged that a red pickup truck of young white people slowed and began screaming the N-word at him. Head posted the story on social media along with a litany of supposed slurs experienced by various groups of Americans. Many of you are so privileged that you will never know what it feels like to be a hijab-wearing Muslim woman. You don't have to think about being transgender and worrying about finding a restroom. He then told the press, this story is not just something that happens here. It's not a Mizzou issue. It's a societal issue. He added, this happened to me, but it happens all the time. Not only here, but everywhere. According to the campus police, the incident happened near campus, not on it, and the Columbia Police Department did not receive a report on the incident from Head. In other words, other than Head's social media post, there's no evidence the incident occurred. The second N word incident. On October 5th, members of the Legion of Black Allegiance were confronted by a drunk white man who called them the N word. The group issued a public statement. At about 12.45 a.m., we noticed an obviously intoxicated white male staggering down Conley Ave on the sidewalk, while still on the phone he says these NS are getting aggressive with me. Members of the campus administration and the police received reports, and the young man in question is reportedly living off campus and is under investigation. The administration responded with mandatory diversity training on October 8. The car bump. On October 10. Concerned student 1950 protesters blocked the homecoming parade and attempted to confront Wolf by surrounding his car. Graduated student Jonathan Butler said, We disrupted the parade specifically in front of Tim Wolf because we need him to get our message. Butler then alleged that the car had hit one of the students, tape shows no such thing, and went on a hunger strike. Wolf apologized for asking the police to remove the protesters. The feces swastika. On October 24, officials supposedly found a swastika drawn in poop on the floor and wall in the bathroom. Resident Halls Association President Bill Donnelly said, After this event, it has become clear to me that the inclusivity of our residence halls has been threatened. But according to Sean Davis at The Federalist, no evidence of the alleged incident has ever been made publicly available. Donnelly refused to respond to requests, and other RHA staffers said they hadn't seen the poop swastika. There are no public photographs of the swastika. The University of Missouri has now been hit with a public records request by the Federalist. Update, the Federalist has now received the police report, which says that an officer did see the pustika, although there were no pictures in the police report. The culprit is still unknown, and the administration, including campus police, did what they could to investigate. So that's still not evidence of systemic racism rather than individual racism or even a possible hoax, given the long history of race hoaxes on campus. Keep in mind that no evidence was ever found that three of these incidents ever really happened. And the fourth one was conveniently taken care of by the college administration. Sounds fishy, doesn't it? ABC 17 News confirms the registration numbers. Here's a breakdown of what demographics saw decreases in applications, high ability, Act of 30 or higher, decreased by 7.7% African American applications decreased by 78 from last year, a 19% decrease Hispanic applications down by 1 transfer students decreased by 94 applications since last year international applications decreased by 6 graduate applications decreased by 19% and decreased 552 compared to 2 years ago non-Missouri resident. Applications decreased by 948 and non-resident deposits dropped by 25% since last year Illinois applications have decreased by 7%.
and deposits decreased by 31%. Illinois applications have decreased by 7% and deposits decreased by 31%. Missouri resident applications increased by 21, but deposits have decreased by almost 10%. Texas applications have also increased by 5.2% compared to last year. These particular protests did, in fact, lead to other protests on other college campuses all over the nation. Like what happened in Berkeley, California during the late 60s. This is a page taken right out of the Alinsky playbook. Whatever happened to the days of going to college to learn, or party, or both? And when exactly did ignorant college professors, who most couldn't make it out there in the real world, become professional radical racist agitators? Glad to see some people aren't falling for the agenda of division that Barack Hussein Obama brought upon our great and generous nation anymore. That man was indeed a curse on our country. A dark mark on our history. And a curse which will be felt for decades to come. But this year proves America is still America, and Americans are still Americans. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment because we want to hear your voice and thank you for watching.